Hey everyone, it's Haley here, also known as Gabrielle for the Facebook folks. Today we're going to be continuing our series um, based on the book, uh, the complete collection of Smith Wigglesworth's life teachings. Here is what um, the cover looks like. And so last time we talked about yielding to the Holy Spirit. And this time we're going to um, kind of build on that. And it's going to be a testimony uh, about Smith and a time that he got to pray for someone and see some miraculous results. So I know it will be encouraging to you all. So we're going to jump right in. So it says, A dear young Russian came to England. He did not know the language, but learned it quickly and was very much used and blessed of God. And as the wonderful manifestations of the power of God were seen, they pressed upon him to know the secret of his power. But he felt it was so sacred between him and God, he should not tell it. But they pressed him so much, and he finally said to them, First God called me, and his presence was so precious that I said to God at every call I would obey him. And I yielded and yielded and yielded, until I realized that I was simply clothed with another power altogether. And I realized that God took me tongue, thoughts, and everything, and I was not myself, but it was Christ working through me. How many of you today have known that God has called you over and over and has put his hand upon you, but you have not yielded? How many of you have had the breathing of his power within you, calling you to prayer, and you have to confess you have failed? So I'm going to just step in here for a second. So I'm going to um, give like a little personal testimony. So the Lord has been <laughs> waking me up pretty early, like uh, between five and six, usually to pray and every day. And so I typically try to wake up and go into another room, like my prayer room, and I'll pray for a couple hours. Sometimes I don't do that and I'm lazy and I stay in bed <laughs> and then I regret it. And so I just am kind of chuckling here because I totally can understand what Smith is saying. Like we, it's those little decisions, uh, day in and day out that really make the big impact. So like, I'm always encouraging you all to continue with the daily disciplines, reading the Bible, praying, worshiping, serving others, um, praying in tongues, if you pray in tongues. So definitely do that every day as the daily discipline and you will see a change just like this Russian man did. Uh, he saw that after a while, it was literally like he didn't even have almost a will of his own. He just really was yielding to Christ that much that he was um, just conformed to his image and were commanded to do that. So this is an encouragement for you all to do that. And um, this is continuing. It's in the same. It's on page 24, if you guys wanted to follow along, if you have this book. So it says, this is Smith talking, of course. I went to a house one afternoon where I had been called and met a man at the door. He said, my wife has not been out of bed for eight months. She is paralyzed. She has been looking so much for you to come. She is hoping God will raise her up. I went in and rebuked the devil's power. She said, I know I am healed. If you go out, I will get up. <laughs> I left the house and went away, not hearing anything more about her. I went to a meeting that night and a man jumped up and said he had something he wanted to say. He had to go catch a train, but wanted to talk first. He said, I come to this city once a week and I visit the sick all over the city. There is a woman I've been visiting and I was very much distressed about her. She was paralyzed and was laying on the bed many months. And when I went there today, she was up doing her work. I tell this story because I want you to see Jesus. Amen. So here's a continuation again. Um, the miracles, the healings, they're always to point people to Jesus and to bring Jesus glory. So again, that's what was happening here. And it says, we had a letter which came to our house to say that a young man was very ill. He had been to our mission a few years before with a very bad foot. He had no shoe on, but a piece of leather fastened on the foot. God healed him that day. Awesome. Three years after, something else came upon him. What is it? I don't know. But his heart failed and he was helpless. He could not rise or dress or do anything for himself. And in that condition, he called his sister and told her to write and see if I could pray. My wife said to go and she believed God would give me that life. 
I went, and when I got to his place, I found the whole count. The whole country was expecting me. Wow. They had said that when I came, this man would be healed. I said to the woman when I arrived, I have come. Yes, she said, but it is too late. Is he alive? I asked. Yes, just alive, she said. I went in and put my hands upon him and said, Martin. He just breathed slightly and whispered. The doctor said, if I move from this position, I will never move again. Oh my. I said, do you know the scripture says, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever? Psalm seventy three twenty six. He said, shall I get up? I said, no. <laughs> the, the day was spent in prayer and ministering the word. I found a great state of unbelief in that house. Uh-oh. But I saw Martin had faith to be healed. His sister was home from the asylum. God held me there to pray for that place. I said to the family, get Martin's clothes ready. I believe he is to be raised up. But I felt the unbelief. I went to the chapel and had prayer with a number of people around there. And before noon, they too believed Martin would be healed. When I returned, I said, are his clothes ready? They said, no. And I said, oh, will you hinder God's work in this house? I love how Smith Wigglesworth just said it like it is. He wasn't afraid to mince words and he... He didn't, he wasn't offended to, or he wasn't afraid to uh, maybe even offend people. He just was speaking truth and that was it. He was kind of cut and dry. So it says, we continue. I went into Martin's room all alone. I said, I believe God will do a new thing today. I believe when I lay my hands on you, the glory of heaven will fill the place. I laid my hands on him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and immediately the glory of the Lord filled the room. And I went out, er, and I went headlong to the floor. I did not see what took place on the bed or in the room, but this young man began to shout, glory, glory, and I heard him say, for thy glory, Lord, and that man stood before me perfectly healed. He went to the door and opened it, and his father stood there. He said, Father, the Lord has raised me up. And the father fell to the floor and cried for salvation. Wow. The, the young woman brought out of the asylum was perfectly healed at that moment by the power of God in that house. So they literally were feeling the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit in the house is what they're saying. And then we continue. God wants us to see that the power of God coming upon people has something more in it than we have yet known. The power to heal and to baptize is in this place, but you must say, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? You say it is four months before the harvest. If you had the eyes of Jesus, you would see that the harvest is already here. The devil will say, you can't have faith. You tell him he is a liar. So the devil is a liar. The Holy Ghost wants you for the purpose of manifesting Jesus through you. Oh, may you never be the same again. The Holy Spirit moving upon us will make us to be like him. And we will truly say, Lord, what wilt thou have me do for you? Yes. Amen. Super encouraging. I hope you all liked those little testimonies there. So the whole point really, again, is to be yielding to the Holy Spirit, to be listening to what God says to us, and then follow those uh, words that he gives us. So once again, faith is a muscle. Use it or lose it. Okay, thanks, guys. Be encouraged. Have a great day.